Hello everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Well, today I thought we would take a look at the draft. Now, everyone's always projecting the first and second rounds. We are going to project four players that are going to possibly be available between rounds three and five. Now, some of these players you've heard of, some of these players you might not have heard of, but you know what? They are people that possibly the Giants should take a look at in our opinion. Um, we're trying to keep this cheery today and not so mean and uh, negative because that's what we get blamed a lot of. But the problem is we are not being mean and negative. We are just saying the truth. And sometimes the truth is a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. But I guess when you're on YouTube and you're, you're not really perceived as a fan channel, it is a bad thing. So let's start off right off the bat. And uh, we are going to go to with one of my favorite players. He is out of Wisconsin, linebacker, 6'3", 240 pounds. I think everyone knows who we're talking about. I like to refer to him as the Zach Attack. Oh, Zach. I, I have been seeing articles and comments and everything else that you are going to be possibly taken by the Giants in the first round. Well, I, I think that's pretty crazy. He, he has talent, but is he a first round talent? No. He may be a second round at best, but to me, he should fall in between rounds three and five. Great things about Zach is he's got fantastic hustle and effort. I mean, he is a guy that's got a non-stop motor. He does a great job pursuing the football, and that is something that you want with your guy on the edge. Now, he is not what we would refer to as a dynamic athlete. Uh, he's got he's got a good giddy up out off the ball, but he does have uh, he sometimes does get himself pushed out of the play, which happens. And now the, you know he is also he can be an effective three down linebacker, which is which is fantastic. I mean you, you don't find too many of those. I mean he's got a powerful first step off the ball. He is I mean he he really he really when he when he tackles he really knows how to bend his knees and drop his hits and just explode into the tackle itself. So you know what he is a fantastic looking player. Uh, he plays a little stiff. I, I know the scouts always like to say well he lacks hip mobility, but you know that's something that's neither here nor there. He can play from sideline to sideline. I mean so I mean at 240 pounds, is he going to be playing on the edge? No, he is definitely going to be coming out at the outside linebacker position. He doesn't right now have a full array of pass rushing skills, um, but he 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 is he is a hard he's a hard nosed player, and I, I really think he doesn't. I mean. Because he's just coming out of the draft, but right now you can't say that he has any elite traits. But I think that he's someone that can grow into the position, grow into the defense. Um, in some ways, he reminds me of Shane Zimenez. Um, but I think he has more ability to play the linebacker position. And I think O'Shane is more of, um, he's more athletic. So, I mean, that's, um, I mean, like I said, I could definitely see him being an effective third down player that we could probably reach up and grab in between rounds of three and five. Another player that actually we talked to and met at the Senior Bowl is Michael Pittman Jr. Now, Michael Pittman has been coming up the charts as well. Um, he is potentially looking at, probably if he has a good compound, maybe pushing into the second round. I mean, the dude has got exceptional hands. I mean, over at USC, he has he barely had any type of drops. I mean, he could just pluck the damn football out of the air. I mean, that is something that is impressive. And his body control when he's going up for the catch, that is another thing that you cannot teach. And he has pure concentration when he is on the field. It's almost like you could tell that his father was an NFL running back and knows how to play. He knows how to play the position. You could, you could tell that he was taught at an early age. Now, some of the problems with Pittman is he's not the fastest guy, and he's not going to be the fastest guy in this field. He's going to have to have what they refer to as football speed because he does not have straight line speed. His acceleration 
he he lacks the initial burst off the line, but he he he's like what I refer to as a downhill runner. Once he gets going, he gets going. Now the other thing is for a gentleman that is his size at six four, he's you know he's not overly elusive. You know, again, some of these things are what they said about Jerry Rice coming out of college. You know, but um, you know, I'm not saying that he's Jerry Rice, but you know, like I said, these are you know having football speed. There's a difference between straight line speed and football speed, and this dude has got football speed. You know, he can break tackles. You know, he's got huge arms, which you know helps him go up and fight for the ball. Um, is he a wonderful route runner? I would say he's above average of running the ball or running his routes. But you know what? He really can make up for it because he's got a strong football IQ. You can tell that if he's working on something, he will master his routes. And I don't have too many worries beyond that with him. But like I said, what's going to be interesting is does he have the physicality off the top of his roots to really bump and create separation? That's what, that's what I think his biggest problem is going to be. But you never know. Like I said, this is just, you know, these are people that we're looking into more of the third and fifth round. Uh, another player that I personally like is Nick Harris out of Washington. We're going to refer to him as an interior lineman. He is only 6'1", 293 pounds, which is kind of small if you're going to be playing inside. But, you know, he could definitely fall into the center position. He is extremely powerful. Have anyone seen him play? He's what they refer to as squatty. In other words, he he's short and low to the ground, and his upper about uh, his upper body really allows him to gain excellent power, and it really helps him push into different angles. He keeps both of his hands and feet active in pass protection, which is fantastic. Which is you want to, which is what we want to see. Um, his average length on his arms, again, is a limiting factor. We heard the same thing about Justin Pugh, and he actually played fairly well. Um, some of the things that, you know, are are, are kind of a red flag um, is, like I said, he, he is, why he is an, a, sm a smart interior lineman, he is guilty at times of playing far too over. Basically, in other words, he when he's going through his uh, rushing angles, um, if it's either a swim or a swipe or a push move, he kind of doesn't recognize it. And, we, and again, this is something that can be taught. Um, he does get overly, overly aggressive um, when he's when he seems to be panicking or if he seems to be outplayed, um, which is something again that is is something that you know that can be taught. But like I said, and and I said one of one of his. Um, you know, one of the biggest cons, again, is going to be his size. But like I said, he's got great explosive at, at, explosiveness excuse me, out of his stance. And he has wonderful lateral play. So, I mean, it's someone that we could use on the line. And again, he's, he's, he reminds me some ways of Will Hernandez in reference to his aggressiveness. Because he is just, he, he is, he's an aggressive kid. You know I mean, he... He, he, he has the mindset you know, that he's going to go out there and attack. And that, again, like I said, sometimes he gets overly aggressive, which, hurt, which hurts him because he kind of gets he loses his foot discipline. But he really can't push the pile. And I think if we put him, like I said, I, I could see him playing center. Um, and like I said, because he is small, you know, like I said, with his size, he may be small, but he, he can handle his space. And again, this is someone that we could probably pick up Maybe into the third or fourth round. One of the other players that I personally like is Evan Weaver, the linebacker out of California. 6'2", 234 pounds. I'm going to go with his cons are things that are potentially are issues right off the back. Right now, he would only be a two-down linebacker in the NFL. He is not what I refer to as a great coverage guy. He's got instinctive coverage skills. And he could play into the zone, but you put him one-on-one, -on -one, man to man on the tight end of the running back, we're, we're, we're going to have some problems. He's also not the greatest athlete in the world, and he will struggle in space against top talent, which he has shown in college. But the dude can hit. I mean, he, he, he attacks the run. You know, he is primarily a bull rusher. 
if he's going if he's going after the quarterback, but in the running game and the box, he's heavy at the point of attack. I mean, he could really get in there, and like I said, he rarely misses tackles, especially when you put him in the box. He is great at shedding that first blocker. You know, he 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 is just a guy that, while right now, like I was saying, he is a two down. I would think he would be a two down linebacker. But he is the type of guy that brings excellent leadership to the defense. His IQ is off the charts. And, and that's something, you know, like I said, you, you cannot teach. Now, does he have, you know, explosiveness? No, because of the fact, like I said, these are guys we're looking at around three and five. And these are some things right now that he could probably teach. And so, um, not explosive, but he could, he could be an effective gap shooter going after the back. Um, like I said, he plays downhill with a lot of strength, and he really knows how to hold his ground. So I mean, you put him in an area like the middle, you know, like the middle field, the middle linebacker, he he's gonna stop the run. He's a guy that could back up Ryan Conley, or he's a kid that could potentially start alongside Ryan Conley, depending on what defense we run, or if we run a hybrid four-three. Um, and like I said, he lacks coverage skills, you know, and he's got modest tools to. To cover, so I, I mean, if you keep it into him in zone coverage, I don't see an issue. But like I said, you put him in man to man, there's going to be some problems. I think there's going to be some problems. But he would be an effective tackler, and he would be the type of guy that if the running back got into the second level, not to the secondary, but the first, you know, the first level is your defensive line, second level is your linebacker. If he gets into the second level, he's going to make the stop. And I, and I and I guarantee that if it's in his box, he's going to make that tackle. He is not going to. So those are the four guys that we would like to potentially look at in rounds three and five. Um, we'll do more of our first and second rounders once um, we get a better idea after free agency, because I think free agency is going to determine a little bit of how we're going to draft. So, I mean, are we going to go linebacker? Are we going to go offensive tackle? Are we going to go wide receiver? Um, uh, C.D. Lamb, still saying C.D. Lamb. He, I think he's going to be the guy. But you know what? Once we figure out free agency a little bit, we can kind of figure out and kind of go from, uh, kind of go from there, and then we could take a little bit deeper look in the draft. Plus, I want to wait for the combine, which we will be a attending. So, again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Thanks for listening.